we're embarking on a Festival of the Arts food crawl. Let's eat. Park Foodies, and we are back for our second time this season for Festival of the Arts through Food Crawl that we had promised in the first video. Having a bit harder time speaking today because it's so cold out. Round two. Yeah. <laughs> we need some tomato soup. Yes. I think we need to go to Pop Eats ASAP. So this one will include some classics that we have enjoyed from festivals past here at Festival of the Arts, including Pop Eats uh, tomato soup with grilled cheese. There's a new one this year with pimento cheese. And that's fried green tomatoes. Yes. Uh, also, I think we're going to be starting out with some coffee at Connections Cafe because there's a special waffle over there, right, Sam? Big Man Waffle. Yeah, we got to try that out. Um, also, there's a poutine, but it has gnocchi in it. I feel like gnocchi and poutine, isn't that just pasta? If you take out the french fries and put gnocchi in? <laughs> Who knows? But there's, gonna, there's a bunch of classics that we want to try out that we're excited to eat again. We'll be rating what we eat from 1 to 10. You will not be seeing in this video the Imagination Station over in the Odyssey because we did that last video. And if you didn't see that video, check out it's the one we posted right before this one to see our thoughts on that. But at the end, we'll include everything that we've eaten and name our favorites. Are you excited? I'm ready. I'm cold. <laughs> if you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Join us for our food crawl here at Epcot's Festival of the Arts. All right, we've made it to Connections for that waffle. After 32 minutes of waiting in Connections Cafe, we finally secured the figment these waffle. Of course, there's a child screaming behind us as usual. There's not many things I wait 32 minutes for, just so you know. So, <laughs> big worth this. it. It's, but is it different or is it just the liege waffle? I mean, it's just different sprinkles. decorations on it, but yeah. I know it's going to be good. We also got some cafe, no, so mocha yeah. lattes. No, cafe mocha. Oh, cafe mocha lattes. Hot. I never drink hot during the day, but I'm just, I've been freezing Cold since out. last night, so I needed right, a hot. See if, uh, see if the, the purple's worth it, you know? And if you've never had a liege waffle before, it's more of like a dessert waffle than a breakfast waffle. It has like a crunchy, like sugary coating. It's really good. It's a good snack. And it's under five bucks, which I feel like is rare. Just as good as a standard liege waffle here. It's a bit different. The sprinkles are different. The flavor is the same. Because remember the iridescent sprinkles I feel like we had? Yeah. A different type of crunch those sprinkles mm -hmm. have. This tastes more like a soft frosting. Um, should I take the medallion off? Do you have the medallion taste? If you want. There he is. The Holy mean toy. man. That's not good. Okay. It's just white chocolate condom. This though. What do we give this usually? A nine? Yeah. It's a nine. Go nine again. It's a nine. It's delicious. It's good. It's a liege waffle. One of our favorite Epcot snacks. Um, but it's not different. So if you're expecting a different flavor, if you had it before, maybe don't run to it if you, if you want to try new things. But it's secure and it's got thickened space on it. So it's a nine. All right, we are off to booth number one. Right before World Showcase, I think it closes at like 5 p.m., which is why we missed it yesterday. Night. All right, yeah, let's go. So I think these are the different types of murals you'll be painting, and the mural is actually on the construction wall. This is the other murals I guess they'll be making throughout the season. See, so it looks like you just walk across, and it's on this wall right here, and you just kind of stand in line. Which one would we get, Sam? Purple. Nice. Purple for pig, uh, figment. So we get three squares each, <laughs> and we are going to station seven to paint the numbers one. All right, Sam is going to paint. So you got to get oh, one. My OCD is telling me to finish this block. So you get you get three numbers, Sam. Two. All right, you're gonna do those two. Three squares. Three squares. That's one. Thank you for telling me three because squares. nobody's told me anything. And I thought you were a math major. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Well, I think this is part of Figment's face. I think when this is done. <laughs> 
You can see it's starting to come out over there. Do you want to do some? Uh, we only get three squares each, so I think we're good. All right, you throw out your stuff over here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I love your Thank nose. you. And this is how it's going to look when it's done. We did this, right? Yes, we did that one, That's I think. Me. All right, we have finally made it to Pop Eats. This is probably the most popular booth here, so expect to wait a bit. We did wait probably about 25 minutes. Oh, Sam timed how long we waited for this. Well, it's not 24 minutes, but I, it should have probably be like 20. Probably like 20 minutes we waited. But it's very popular. This grilled cheese and soup, I mean, for this type of weather, it is pretty cold, or somewhat cold in Florida this time of year. Uh, we got the pimento cheese, which is new for this year. And fried green tomatoes. Oh, there's fried green tomatoes in it, nice. Look how crispy and yeah. beautiful. Usually they cut that into, it's like they cut it in fours, so you get like, like you get half of a sandwich, but it would be cut in half. But they were trying to move so quick that it didn't even cut ours. Did you dip it in the soup yet? <laughs> the fried green tomato has a little, there's a little spice in it. Maybe it's the pimento cheese. But pimento cheese is like usually made with like mayonnaise. So I feel like it goes well with tomatoes. Cheese, yeah. butter, soup. Mm, hey, you didn't even dip it in the soup. I want to try the soup. Yeah, maybe just it's scoop so the soup flavorful. in here. Oh, well, you got the flavors. Has a little spice. Mm. It's like such a cool day. This is so good. I honestly. You can see the steam coming off of it. I don't know if it's because it's cold, or did I just really like grilled cheese? Pimentos, pimentos are one of my favorite cheeses, so. Yeah, with the pork rind, remember the pimento dip? Yeah. Pimentos I've, are good cheese. They must have a good pimento uh, supplier here at Disney. I'm gonna go 10. Wow, 10. And you're not 10 crazy. Yeah, you, I'm, I'm not 10 crazy. I could, I could be a 10 guy. Like but this, this yeah. Is cheese. It looks like a 10. All right, so this is the almond cake, right, Sam? Yes, from Japan. It's very colorful. Um, Not as colorful as the figment cake. Yes, but it is a stamp on your colorful food uh, stamp thing. Let's see, uh, it is a little rough. I mean, they keep these in a fridge, so they're going to be pretty cold. But the thing I like about this one is that it has chocolate and raspberry, which mm. the figment cake does not have. It just tastes like a rainbow cake. Like a rainbow cookie. Like a rainbow cookie cake. Is yeah. Right. It's good. I like the cake to be a little bit more moist. At least this batch is a little dry. The raspberry mixed with the chocolate. Very good. All you need is a more moist cake. And this will be hitting some high numbers. It still, hit, still hit some high numbers. I still highly recommend and understand why the Pop Eats booth is so popular uh <laughs> pun intended i'm gonna go seven with this i really enjoy it. i like the raspberry i love rainbow cookies we're from new york we have rainbow cookie culture there it's just something i enjoy a little a little more moistness wetness with the cake probably could do a bit better but still great flavor combination so i'm gonna go solid seven all right so this was a jason decision to get because it's, it's very filling so we were wondering whether or not we should get it, but I feel like Noki Poutine sounded like such a unique and solid offering get, especially it has burrata on top, right, Sam? Look at the steam. It looks off. good, but to be honest, I just tried a piece and it was so dry. But it was just like yeah, I didn't I think mix you need it that in. Little... Yeah, you gotta mix it in. So it has a uh, red wine braised beef short rib, burrata, cheese curds, and gnocchi. But like I was saying before to Sam, we're actually to you guys. Is it like poutine with french fries and cheese curds? The so gnocchi is your fry, I don't Technically know. like pasta or gnocchi? The gnocchi tastes like a dry french fry when you just have like the gnocchi by yeah. itself. Now, there's positives and negatives with this. The meat on the beef short very good. The cheese curds, very good. The gnocchi is dry, so you need more of this sauce you really drench them in and the beef short rib unfortunately is salty which is overpowering a lot of the flavor of the dish i want to try just some burrata burrata is good 
it's good. It, it has so much potential. But it's not like that cheese, uh, grilled cheese level. It's $10, too. So. Yeah. Please. It's not... You used, to, you used to be bigger portions of this, I feel like. I think the grilled cheese in the soup is a better value. It's like six twenty-five or something. Yeah. I like it, though. I'm gonna I give guess it a six. the beef makes it more expensive. Yeah. I'm going to give it a six. The beef is, is tender. It's good. The burrata tastes very good. So there are elevated things in here, but the dry gnocchi and the saltiness of the beef bring it down. This could easily be like an eight. I feel an eight with this, but it's not rich in the potential, so it's going to save All right, so Sam is trying out the gnocchi now. I think the first thing you said, salty, right? It's so salty. I don't even think, wait, what is this? That's cheddar cheese. Oh. So there's cheddar cheese curds and there's burrata. Very right cold, there. the cheese is super cold. Yeah, well it's supposed to be cold with hot, like stuff on top. There's so much of the gnocchi and then the gnocchi is just so dry. Yeah, you I don't need know. more sauce. What'd you give it? I gave it a six. I have a five. Five still is average. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, but the meat is good, right? And the burrata is good. It's, mm, it's very salty, though. Yeah, the saltiness of the meat's good. I feel like the tenderness is what I like about it. It's like more gravy. Yeah, agree, and less salt. Now, Deconstructed Dish has a very long line, but I do want to bring it up because a lot of people do like uh, the Deconstructed BLT and the Deconstructed French Onion that Soup. That sounds good. Yeah. Gruyere cream, onion, bread pudding. Yeah, but I think we want to start, we want to go to Mexico, and there's some other things we want to get before this. We have room at the end, we might come back, but we just want to let you guys know that it's here and people do like it. And we had the BLT before, it was pretty solid. All right, so our friend Carly, Carly's Adventures on Twitter. Uh, I think it's Adventures by Carly. Adventures by Carly, sorry, Carly. On Twitter, uh, highly suggested, oh my gosh, the wind almost <laughs> blew away this carne asada. Uh, the carne asada from El Artista Hambriento. I'm sorry if I'm not saying that right. Uh, but it does look good. It looks like it's cooked about medium rare. You don't get to pick how they cook the carne asada. It's like a chipotle marinade, I believe. Let's take a look. It's supposed to be sweet potato puree, but that looks like, it's like normal regular. To me. I think that's maybe onions right on it. Now. And there's some fried, there were some crispy onion straws on top, right? Mm -hmm. It looks good. A little chewy. That can be carne asada. Very definitely well cooked. And the onions add a good flavor. It's got some good flavor on top of it. I like the way it's cooked. I like the red meat. This is definitely just a normal potato. I'm not sure maybe they ran out of sweet potato. But that's just normal mashed potato. There's also a $16 uh, marshmallow margarita at that booth, but wow, money. They this is a lot of money, a... too. It's about 10 bucks. But I mean, I feel like for meat, I kind of understand. Yeah. It's just the, the, I, I didn't feel like portion compared to price. Like, this ain't going to fill you up, especially because this doesn't have a lot of carbs. You're going to be hungry after this. And you're probably going to be spending at least 20 bucks trying to get things. You know? Um, I won't knock the price against it. I'm going to go solely off the flavor. I'm going to give it a seven. I think it's good. I think it's definitely better than the poutine that we had. Um, not salty like that poutine, not, you know, obviously dry, well cooked. Just, it's an overall solid dish. The best thing I've had here, no, that's definitely the grilled cheese so far. Uh, and uh, also yesterday, or in our last video, we had the hummingbird cake. So those are so far my two top, but this is definitely a solid savory option and a seven to me. All right, we are crossing continents, going from Mexico to Germany. All right, we have made it to Germany and the crowds are in mass. All right, so in past years, the Germany booth has been one of our favorites for Festival of the Arts. This is the red, red wine braised beef short rib. Um, one of my favorite things usually every year. And you're year. following the carne asada, so. Yes, Let's yes, see. you wanna take a look and see if this breaks off. Oh, I didn't even need the knife. I ran the to get a knife. The carne asada we had trouble with off yeah. camera trying to cut. Look at those potatoes, look at these. That's a parsnip puree. Oh, wow. Better than the carne asada. So the fact that it's mass produced, this might be on the same level as the grilled cheese for me. It's meat and potatoes, which is my flavor. It's tender, it's well prepared, and it's mass produced, which is like at a restaurant, you have to have a bit higher standards. But at a booth, you know? Wow. 
Let me try these uh, this broccolini. Yeah. Very good. I'm gonna go nine with that. For me, that's tender, not too salty. That's like a good like flavoring on it. The cherry tomatoes are very well prepared. The mashed potatoes are creamy. Broccolini is good. Yeah, that's a solid nine. Probably my favorite savory thing outside the grilled cheese. All right, so black forest cake. This we've heard very positive things about from our friends, right? Yes. From, that from our looks friends, really I mean people I watch on Twitter. Yeah. And Sam, you also got the frozen rose, one of your favorites. Uh, it's so pretty. Like that's one of the things about the food here at Festival of the Arts. It's so craftily or artisanally is that even a word prepared that you feel bad even like breaking it up. But you gotta eat it. And that's one of the reasons I feel like the lines get very long too, because they take some time to make the things look good. These are pretty dishes, you know? Yeah, cherry and like dark chocolate just go together. Germany's killing it. <laughs> I like this, I think this food's better than poppies. Oh? I think it's dangerous to say. But the short rib. That's like my, I think that's my favorite dessert. I like this more than the hummingbird cake, but I'm more of a chocolate person, which is why I'm interested in what you think. I'm gonna go nine for that cake. Yeah, double nines here. This is probably my favorite booth of any festival I think I, that I've had. And um, should I try this too? Yeah, you're, let's keep it rolling. It's nice that it's not melting. Usually the other times I have that drink, it's already liquid. Cold. So it's nice to this actually have it frozen. I'll give that a seven. It's, it's a sweet, it's a sweet wine. It's a rosé. It's frozen. It's good. But these things, man, so good. Some of the best festival food, seriously. Dark chocolate with the cherries. Um, mixed as well with that top part. Just delicious. All right. Under advisement of friends, we are heading to Italy because apparently there's something good here. This is usually our booth to skip. All right, the mozzarella, mozzarella. Frittini? I don't know. My hair probably looks nuts. There are seagulls everywhere. <laughs> so this looks like an artist palette, I guess. And you have different like assorted dips. So they I'm don't assuming... tell you what the dips are yeah. though. Yeah, so this is a pesto. This is a marinara. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. So let's try each one out. And it's like a fried cheese. We normally skip this booth, but yeah. with Carly very said it was good. incredible sources for saying this is good. Now, if we didn't take a bunch of pictures, Sam. And it was hot. That'd be pretty it's probably good. cold now, because it's very mm -hmm. cold out. That's better than I anticipated. I'm gonna try the um, marinara. Mangiare. Hmm. I don't know what this sauce is. It looks like a balsamic, almost. Well, I think you're right. Let me try. Yeah. So this is pesto, right here. Marinara. It's like a white cream sauce. Almost like a Alfredo type. Yeah. And this is a balsamic. Pretty solid. It's, it's, it's a an true original dish. It's an original dish. I would still skip it. It's not worth the wait in line, being surrounded by vicious seagulls. I feel like I'm in like the birds movie, like the teen therapies. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna wow. take that mozzarella from you. Yeah, seriously. Um, but it's better than I anticipated, better than I've had in previous iterations of this booth. It's not authentic. Do not, when you go to the Italy booth, do not expect authentic Italian food. Expect like elevated Chef Boyardee. This is definitely elevated Chef Boyardee. It'd probably be better if it was warmer. But it's a little cold out, so I'll give it a six. It's original. It's authentic. It's slightly elevated because you have I don't think dips. fried mozzarella is authentic. Maybe the... oh, not authentic. You yeah, know, <laughs> it's not authentic, but it's original. Um, and it's it's artisanally, I guess, crafted uh, because you have like the. It's palette. nice having the different dips. Yeah, it's the aesthetic, and it's fun. Uh, that that's what gives me the six rather than putting the set of five. But it's fried cheese, and it's not bad fried cheese. So my recommendation is to skip. But if you're gonna have a little fun with your food, kids would probably love this. I can definitely see you enjoying it. What I do enjoy in Italy is like this chalk Luca art. 
All right, we had American in our last video, so check out our last video if you want to see our thoughts on the American food. But we are about to head to our last booth for this crawl. All right, Japan Goshiki, the final booth. There are other things we wanted to try. We wanted to try the France uh, cheese-filled croissant. Just a lot of food, Sam, a lot of food, right? Yeah, I'm already, I reached <laughs> the point. There, were, there are other things that we want to try, other things we want to do, deconstructing dish, but these are the things we had to hit. The sushi donut is, is very prominent here. Um, it's got some ginger right in the center, sesame seed, shrimp, uh, cucumbers, salmon, tuna, and then it looks like you got like these little drips. It looks very, what was the Ellen kid? Right there, and you get uh, against a little fake wasabi. I'm gonna take the ginger out. So I like having ginger like kind of at the end. Do I just use my hands for this? Yeah, I use my hands to do a little dip. I always like the sushi here. Although I don't recommend using your hands. In Japan, they do use their hands. It's good. It's pretty. Is it the best sushi I've ever had? Definitely not. Is it good sushi? Yeah. I would give it a seven. It's good. It's pretty. If you're looking for sushi, it's solid. I don't know if it's like like the most authentic thing, but it's definitely a very good looking thing. And it's good fish, you know? So yeah, solid seven. All right, so this is the dessert at Goshiki. I heard very positive things about this. Ichigo Daifuku, mixed yes. berry mochi, sweet azuki bean paste, and mascarpone. I think it's surrounded in bean paste. I'm gonna take this strawberry off. I'll probably eat that at the end. I like the thing that it's on. Get a little plate? Yeah, I wanna take that home with us. What are you gonna do with it? I don't know, eat more, go whatever it is, Goshiki food on it. Ichigo Daifuku. Mmm. So interesting. It sounds interesting. I'm not a huge fan of mochi. It's almost like the, a taffy. Tastes like it surrounds it, like a sweet taffy. But the sweet though, it's not too sweet. Well, the drummers are going. I love the drummers. Yeah. I like it. I, I think it's good. I'm going to give this another seven. I think both of them are pretty solid. I can see this going either way for some people because it is pretty funky. But, you know, I'm going to give this a solid 7. It's got a nice sweet center. Uh, the whipped cream on top accentuates the flavors. It's the mascarpone food. cream, not yeah. whipped cream. It's what? Mascarpone. Oh, okay. It's very light and airy. And uh, the um, outside almost like, uh, the mochi is almost like a taffy that surrounds it. It's good. It's different. Just a heads up, you can get the artist palette jumbo cookie that we've had in a previous video the previous year for Festival of the Arts here at Refreshment Port. Now that it's five o'clock and it's closed, you can kind of see the paint by numbers mural is more almost, done. yeah, more or less done. But it's kind of cool because if you have a pretty packed crowd, you can kind of see the, the uh, extent of everyone's work at the end of the day and everyone works together to produce this nice mural. You walked right past my work of art that I well you, well, you want to find your eye? Where's your eye? I think, yeah, we were seven. So, right here. Sam did Figment's eyes. This is green face Figment. Call me right here. <laughs> Alright, so that does it for our food crawl at Epcot's Festival of the Arts. So many great foods. I actually, I'm not sure. It's this or holidays. This might be my favorite again, Sam. So, I'm not sure which one to pick. What is, what were some of your favorite eats from the festival? Okay, definitely the grilled cheese. Pop Eats booth is still <laughs> one of my favorite booths, and the, I agree yeah. with everything you thought about Germany. Germany that, and Pop Eats are my two top. I think cake at yeah. Germany was the top cake out of yeah. the rainbow cake from the Figment booth and the rainbow cake from the Pop Eats booth. The chocolate cake from Germany. I what about it versus the um, hummingbird cake from uh, Artist hummingbird Table America? Hummingbird cake was very good. Okay, yeah. they're kind of equal. I think they're both very good, they're both very different flavors. So. Yes. I can't say one is better than the other. I would put the chocolate one above, but Hummingbird is right underneath it. Uh, my favorite eats the whole festival were the pimento grilled cheese, uh, the Pop-Tart Pop-Tart, um, the uh, Hummingbird cake, 
the short rib, and then the chocolate cake. Those are like my top five, I would the say. The gnocchi, I feel like, was the worst. Yeah, it was the biggest letdown, I would say, for sure, is the gnocchi. And the mozzarella, I can take, take it or leave it. Yeah, I wouldn't wait in a line for it, and I certainly wouldn't uh, like go out of my way for it. But like, if you have a kid, I think they'd have fun playing with it. And I don't think it tasted bad by any means, but it's just... I've had better fried mozzarella. I've had better fried mozzarella in Disney, and I've had better fried mozzarella outside of Disney. So I wouldn't want to stay and eat that. But it was aesthetically fun. Uh, definitely that short rib. Uh, definitely the, that chocolate cake, as far as today goes. Uh, those are we those for me. Yeah, we got a lot done yeah. today, and the lines were long. Yeah, but they moved. Yes. Yeah, the very great efficient line moving. I guess I don't know what the right term for it is here at Disney, and uh, the Japan booth was also a lot of fun. So. Uh, out of notable uh, mention to them, but those would be my top five. The Pop-Tart, the Hummingbird Cake, the Short Rib, the Pimento Grilled Cheese, and the um, Chocolate Cake. Right? Did I, say, I didn't say that twice. Great. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Liking will really help our channel grow. It pushes this video out into the stratosphere of the YouTube algorithm. It helps other people find the video subscribing. It also helps our channel grow, believe it or not. Hit the bell notifications, so that way you're notified every time that videos come out. Just one sec. Every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Thank you so much for watching. Don't count the days. To make the days count. We will see you next time if you're watching. That's all, folks. <laughs> that sun was like, I was trying to block it with my head, but it was just, you know. And we met so many awesome people today, too. So thank yeah. you for saying hi and chatting yeah. with us. We really appreciate That's it. That's like one of the funnest things about coming to the parks is meeting other people that enjoy the parks just as much as you do sometimes in, in, in different ways. But yeah, and we had a great crawl. I had so much fun today. At least the sun was out. We were in the dark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A little warmer. Are you ready for Broadway tomorrow? I am.